Well, hey everybody, it is great to see you today. Today is February 2nd, and this is Living Power, your online Bible study. I want to welcome those who are just now finding us online. It is so great to have you. We consistently have people joining our study every single day, so if this is your first video, I want to welcome you and tell you how excited I am that you are here. Today we are in the book of Exodus. We just started it yesterday. And the verse for today is, let my son go so he can worship me. I shared with you a genealogy of Moses today on the blog. I hope that is helpful to you. It kind of shows the birth of Moses and that he came from the tribe of Levi. Tomorrow I'm going to give you a chart of the plagues, which will help you to understand what those mean and the significance there. One point I want to make, um, I know a couple of you will find this very um very meaningful. Do you know that Moses is 80 years old as he's going before Pharaoh and Aaron is 83 years old as they go before Pharaoh? The most important job of their entire life. And here it comes um, during their wisdom years. Um, and that reminds me that you're just never too old ever to stop serving the Lord. And as we get started today, I know some of you are watching from work, some of you are watching from home. Uh, this may be the morning for you when you watch, or it may be right before you go to bed after a hard day's work. And I want to remind you that nothing that is going to happen today or that has happened today is anything that you and the Lord together cannot handle. God is in your past, He's in your present, and He is in your future. And He knows everything that is going to happen, and He is watching over your life very, very carefully. So I hope that gives you blessing today as we move forward. God is about to display Himself as the covenant God who remembers his promises and brings his people out of slavery. Yesterday he appeared to Moses at the burning bush. He's been given, Moses has been given his commission. Notice in 310 that God has told him to lead his people out of slavery. He never specifically says, and into the promised land. That will not be Moses' job. That will be given to someone else. Moses has been told his next step tactically He's been given the strategic plan. Now the tactical plan is to go and convene the leaders of the Hebrews back in Egypt. So he has orders to go. The, uh, the theme for today is that practice or patience, patience prepares. Practice does too, I suppose, but patience prepares. And Moses is prepared. He is he has been for 40 years in the wilderness, and now as he is about 80 years old, he is going back into Egypt, and he's going to lead the people out. Now, I wanted to mention to you, there's a big difference in the Egyptian Moses and the wilderness Moses. The Egyptian Moses was rash. He was hot-tempered. Remember, he killed that Egyptian for um, beating the Hebrew. He was a man who took matters into his own hands. He relied on his position to save him, and he was a very powerful man in high places. Now, wilderness Moses is very cautious. We see him responding to the Lord, Oh, wait a minute, I don't know if I'm the right man. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I have what it takes. We see some reluctance in him now. But we see a man that's learning to rely on God's presence God's presence is really what is sustaining him and strengthening him to be able to do this. And we see Moses turning into a humble man. A lot of people say Job was patient. Well, Moses was humble. And we're going to learn the importance of being humble and submissive to um, being obedient to the Lord as we study the book of Exodus. Moses is still a man, though. He tells a little fib. I don't know if you noticed, but he tells a little fib when he goes back to Jethro and he says, you know, is it okay if I leave and take my wife and go back into Egypt? He doesn't really completely tell him all about the encounter with God. And he says, I don't know if my family is alive. God has told him that Aaron is alive. Of course, he might be referring to Miriam and some of the others, so we'll, we'll give him grace on that. Uh, here's where he almost gets himself killed. Now, it's in 424. I mentioned it yesterday. I just wanted to mention it because I wanted to pique your curiosity. But what happens is he is with his wife and two sons. And he is 
in the wilderness heading on, heading back to Egypt. And evidently, the Lord is very angry with him and um, strickens him with a sickness. It, in some commentaries, it says it was a stomach illness, but he becomes very ill. He's bedridden, and um, he almost dies. And the reason is because he has not circumcised his son. Some commentary says it was the second son, the youngest son. Some commentary said, well... Maybe Moses didn't completely do it out of disobedience, but he was listening to his wife. Maybe it was Zipporah who was the one that didn't want to circumcise the son because she's the one here that comes in and actually performs the act with a flint knife, and um, she does it quickly, and she touches Moses' foot, which is kind of a sign that, you know, he, he, he is, in essence, accepting of doing this. God takes that as... Um, a, a pure sacrifice and says that, you know, you're forgiven, this is okay. But the point here is that it is so important to be obedient to God to the letter, not just doing the things that we want to do, but to do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses cannot go and lead the people out of slavery if he is not in obedience to the Lord. And the covenant in the Hebrews being God's people had everything to do with the external sign of circumcision. So his children had to be circumcised before they went back. That was the whole thing about that. Now, interesting, this is the last time we see his wife. His wife, Zipporah, and the two sons actually go back to dad um, they do not move in or go back into Egypt at this point. Later, 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 we're going to see the dad brings them back to Moses in the wilderness, but this is the last time we see Zipporah and the sons for a while. So what does God call Israel in 422? This is one of your questions on the blog today. Notice God calls Israel his firstborn son. And to me that says, I love them. I love Israel. These are my people, my firstborn child. I will not leave them in bondage. It also says to me, if they were the first, then maybe a second is coming. And he also loves his secondborn children. That's us, the Gentiles. He loves us as his secondborn children just as much as the first. And he says, let my son go so he can worship me. Now I want to give you a word study today. The Hebrew word for worship is actually sir, is actually slave. The same root in the Hebrew for slave and worship, it's exactly the same. And what that means is that Israel was in, in their worship of him, they were going to serve the Lord. Did you know that service is an act of worship? Every time you serve him, taking care of your family, doing a good job unto the Lord at work, Forgiving others, loving, loving others, even when you don't feel like it, is an act of service unto the Lord, and it's, it's worship. Notice the promises of deliverance in chapter 6. Take these personally as you're reading this. Don't just see it as a promise to Israel. See it in your own life. This is God speaking to you and his promises to you. It says, I appear to your forefathers. They knew me as El Shaddai. Now I reveal myself to you with a new name. Remember yesterday we talked about the great I am. God's first name is Yahweh. It means he is higher than all the other gods. He always was. He always will be. Notice all the times in chapter 6 he says, I am or I will. I am God. I will free you. I will redeem you. I will claim you as my own. I will be your God. I will bring you into the promised land. I am. So do you know the Lord is your great I am? If you were to complete the sentence, God is my I am, how would it read? I would love to take you to Psalm 121 today. Perhaps it would read something like this. You look up to the mountains. Does your help come from there? Your help comes from I am who made heaven and earth. I am will not let you stumble. I am the one who watches over you. Indeed, I am the one who watches over you, and I never slumber or sleep. I am stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you, nor the moon at night. I am keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. 
I am keeps watch over you as you come and go, and will be doing so at this moment, both now and forevermore. Let me remind you today that nothing has happened or will happen today that you and the Lord together cannot handle. God is with you. This is what gave Moses strength to accomplish what he was called to do, and that can give us strength that God is with us an ever-present help in times of trouble, giving us strength to handle the task before us. Well, I hope this has been a blessing to you. I have so enjoyed our time together. Blessings. Shalom to you. I'll see you tomorrow.